humble mind. Welcome to the Humble Lounge, and honestly, I'm too hyped to do the rest of my intro because while I was furiously typing away an essay about the closure of the studio responsible for Hi-Fi Rush, the gaming industry decided to pull a first their sour, then their sweet kind of 180 on me with some of the sickest game announcements I've ever seen. So today, I wanted to go over the game announcements from Xbox, Sony, and Nintendo that got me personally the most excited. I'm not letting you off the hook for Hi-Fi Rush, though. So, as the Summer Games Fest, State of Play, Xbox Showcase, and most recently the latest Nintendo Direct rolled around, I would write down the names of the titles that got my attention. And since I'm excited about all of these, I couldn't decide which one I wanted to talk about first, so what I ended up doing was just cutting up my list, putting them in my 2DS case, shaking them up, and then whichever one I pull from the case first is the one I'll talk about. Okay, let's see what the first pick is. Well, this isn't necessarily the one I'm the most hyped about, but I'm excited about it regardless. So when I first heard about this game, I was actually pretty excited because if you think about it, there aren't a lot of Lord of the Rings games that let you explore the Shire. Honestly, the only one that I can think of off the top of my head is the Lego Lord of the Rings game. And with such a peaceful and idyllic location, I think a cozy life sim actually fits this really well. Now to be fair, it's not the best looking game and I don't think it's going to be like a 10 out of 10, but I definitely think it's going to be a guilty pleasure and something that me and my partner are really going to enjoy playing together. So yeah, not the one that I was the most hyped about, but that means it's only up from here. Let's see what we got next. Fable. Okay, let's do this. So the announcement of Fable was a really pleasant surprise for me. Me and one of my friends have been talking about this game for years and how much we miss it. And now that I think about it, I've been revisiting a lot of games that remind me of Fable, like Kingdoms of Amalur on the Switch. I had the original Fable on the Xbox 360, and I don't know if I ever beat that game, but I did play it and I loved the whole universe and just the general vibe of that game. And now that I have an Xbox One, I actually came across a copy of Fable 2 recently, and so I'm excited to finally jump into that. And now that this game has been announced, it feels like this sort of cosmic alignment of things where over the years I've been thinking about Fable more and more and more and now it's coming out so I think that now is a better time than ever to get back into that series. It's going to be a reboot so we'll see how that goes but overall I'm really excited the game is gorgeous. And the next one to come up was Super Mario Party Jamboree and honestly I never expected to be hyped about a Mario Party game again. It just feels like the franchise over the years has been on for the most part a steady decline and I didn't get the latest title in the series but I heard a lot of criticisms especially about the lack of variety but with this one, it seems like Nintendo's been listening because we get seven boards, including some from the Nintendo 64 era, and honestly, this one looks like it's shaping up to be the best one since maybe Mario Party 3. Super Mario Party Jamboree looks like so much fun, and I can't wait to get my friends together. Um, well, I gotta make friends first, but I can't wait to get them together once they exist. And the next one is Expedition 33, and oh my gosh, this game looks so awesome to me. The world setting looks fantastic, the game is beautiful, and I never thought I would say this, but I'm so excited to play as Edward Battinson. And this is a completely new IP as far as I'm aware, so I knew nothing about this until I saw it for the first time, but it blew me away. The combat looks like a really cool blend of Persona 5 with the modernized version of Legend of Dragoon that I've had in my head for all of these years. I hope that this game is successful because the world setting is so cool and I would love to see an expansion on it. And because there are so many expeditions, being that this one is Expedition 33, there's room for sequels. And maybe this is a stretch to say, but selfishly, I hope that this game is successful because it could also prove that there is a market for a Legend of Dragoon remake when you think about this game as well as the Final Fantasy 7 remake. But who knows? Regardless, I'm going to really enjoy my time with this and I can't wait to play it. The combat looks so engaging. And now we have another but totally different RPG, Mario & Luigi Brothership. I was so hyped to see this. I love that Nintendo is finally recognizing, supporting, and embracing the quality that are Mario RPGs. And it's crazy to think that over the last couple of years we've gotten remakes of Mario RPG and Paper Mario, and now we're finally getting a new Mario & Luigi series after so many years. I love the art style, and some of the animations remind me of the Mario Strikers series, and it looks like the classic gameplay and humor of this series is in full force. I have really, really high hopes for this game, and I hope that it continues this trend of successful Mario RPGs. And the next game? I I had never heard of before, but from the onset, I was really impressed with the way the game looked, and it's hard to ignore the stacked lineup that is the staffing behind this game. I mean, we've got the creator of Final Fantasy and the composer of Final Fantasy working on this. I heard that it was an Apple Arcade exclusive, so it's cool to finally see it on a more mainstream system. And if the game does well enough, maybe it will open the doors up for games like Blue Dragon, Lost Odyssey, and The Last Story. Those are other Mistwalker classics. And as I was reading up on the game, I found out that the backgrounds are actually 
handcrafted. They're not pre-rendered, they're not painted, they're models. And that's why the game has this pop in its visuals that are just super interesting to look at. With so many RPGs on the horizon, it's hard to know which one I'm going to pick first or the one that I'm going to stick with the most, but this game looks really cool and definitely looks like a contender. Now Donkey Kong Country returns, returns, returns. I didn't include in this list for myself personally, but mostly for you guys to spread awareness. It's super cool that we're getting an HD version of this game on the Switch, and now you can play pretty much all of the modern Donkey Kong Country games. I still have this on the Wii, and I enjoy it that way, so that's probably what I'm going to stick with, but I'm really excited that this game is here, and Donkey Kong fans definitely deserve something. Now we just need Star Fox, Wave Race, and some more F-Zero, and I can die happy. And the next one I drew was the new Perfect Dark, and I also wrote down Perfect Dark 64 since that was released on the Switch, although I have heard that that's not a very good port, unfortunately. But a new Perfect Dark completely took me off guard. I was not expecting it. It kind of looks like a first-person Hitman game set in the future, and the parkour elements and the graphics and the gunplay just look really, really cool to me. Now, unfortunately, I was really looking forward to playing Perfect Dark 64 on the Switch because I actually never had that game. It's one of those games that eluded me. I had GoldenEye, but I never had Perfect Dark. So I thought it would be really cool to play the 64 version and then go to this game, but looks like I'll have to emulate it. However, I think this new Perfect Dark looks great. I think they modernized it in all the best ways. I love the way they redesigned Joanna Dark. And overall, it just looks like a really fun cinematic game. I'm not typically into that kind of stuff, but this one really grabbed my attention. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. This game looks so cool. I've been telling people for years I think it would be really cool if the Zelda franchise switched it up and let you play as Zelda or maybe even like a version of Ganondorf where he's going against the grain of the evil type character he's supposed to be. And we're getting a step further with that now because you can play as Zelda. I also think that the building style mechanic where you can summon echoes of things that you've captured is really really cool. And to me it seems like they're injecting some of that Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom style creativity into the 2D top-down Zeldas, which I don't think is a bad thing necessarily. I'm sure there's going to be some detractors, but I really like the idea, and I also really love the Link's Awakening remake style graphics, so I'm glad that they brought that back. I really thought that that was going to be a one-off design, so it's cool to see that come back again. I was screaming at the TV yelling, oh my gosh, can you play as Zelda? And then of course Link falls into the Shadow Realm, and yeah, you can. Really, really cool stuff. I also haven't seen enough people talking about this. I think it's really cool that the Four Swords Adventures port to the Switch allows you to to do online co-op. You don't need a GameCube, four GBAs, and four link cables anymore. So yeah, I feel like Zelda fans are eating really well right now. So the next one was a really big one for me. I love Dragon Quest, and it was really cool to finally get some more information on the Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake, and they really got us good. It was rumored that the first and second one would also be included, and it looks like we are getting the 1 and 2 HD 2D remakes as well. I played the Switch port of the mobile Dragon Quest 1, and I also played the game again on the Game Boy Color, and I much prefer that one. But I haven't completed Dragon Quest 2, I'm still working on that one. I think I'm going to complete it on the Game Boy Color, but I'm really excited to play Dragon Quest 3 on the Switch, and that's what I'm going to wait for. This game is gorgeous, and I just can't stress enough how hyped I am for this. If they sell all three in like a trilogy collection, I, I might go for it, and I'm probably going to replay Dragon Quest 1 again, for the third time. <laughs> I love Dragon Quest. Now the next one I drew was Silent Hill 2. And maybe it's sacrilegious to say this, but I haven't actually played Silent Hill 1 or 2 yet. I only had the PlayStation 1 for a short period of time, and so I never got to get around to this game. The only Silent Hill game I've played so far is Shattered Memories on the Wii, which thankfully a lot of the fans seem to really enjoy. But horror game remakes have been doing really well lately, and I think Silent Hill 2 is going to be no exception. This game looks really surreal and haunting, and I can't wait to see how it all shakes out. Again, like many of the games that have been announced, this makes me want to go back to the originals and try them out for the first time. <laughs> so many games to play. And uh, this next one, man, this is going to be a day one purchase. Easily the biggest surprise for me out of all of these games was the Marvel vs. Capcom collection. I just would have never expected this in a million years because I know licensing can be really difficult, especially when you're talking about seven different games. But the fact that we're getting all of these classics as well as The Punisher, which only was in arcades previously, is just so, so cool. And I have so many fond memories, especially of Marvel vs. Versus Capcom 2. As soon as the announcer casually said taking you for a ride, I knew what was coming but I couldn't believe it even though I was seeing it right in front of my eyes. I'm not the best fighting game guy ever but I really love these games and I cannot wait for this. 
And speaking of fighting games, the next one I drew was Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero, and I'm really excited for this one. I have a lot of nostalgia for this series in general, and one of the very first Nintendo Wii games I got was Budokai Tenkaichi 2, that's the one I have the biggest connection with. It was a launch title on the Wii, and I didn't quite understand the motion controls at the time, and so instead of just moving my hands and my wrists and stuff like that, I moved my entire body so I was sweating by the time I had unlocked a bunch of the characters. But I had such fond memories of that series, and I understand why they took a break, but I think it's been enough time and I think it's time that we get another entry in the series. Of course you're going to relive the anime basically when you play this game, but the alternate storylines are always the ones that intrigue me the most, and it looks like those are coming back as well which is really cool, plus we're also getting the Dragon Ball Super characters so I think this one is going to be really fun. And so the next one I did not expect to see. Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. When I first saw the footage, I thought that this was just going to be a remake of Metroid Prime 2 or 3, which would have been totally fine, but as the footage went on, I was like, wait, no, I don't, I don't think I've seen this before. And then when the logo finally flashed on screen and it just solidified itself in my brain, I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. Seven years in the making. This game looks gorgeous. I love the way Samus' suit is designed. I think Retro Studios absolutely knocked it out of the park when it comes to the Metroid Prime Remastered graphics, so to see it continue here was also a welcome treat. And man, I think this game is definitely going to be a Game of the Year contender in 2025. This one is for sure the one I'm expecting to be my favorite experience of next year, and it's right off the heels of my last video where I covered Metroid Dread, so I am unbelievably hyped for this. I think one of the greatest things about the Switch's success is that we've seen a lot of Nintendo's smaller IPs get notoriety and attention that they hadn't gotten in years, and so we're seeing remakes of Luigi's Mansion, and we're seeing new Pikmin entries, and Metroid is selling really well, and even Zelda is doing better than Mario in a lot of cases. And I think that's really allowed Nintendo to stretch their legs and be more creative. And I definitely believe that this is going to be one of those cross-gen games that we'll see on the Switch 2. So honestly, I think this is just the first of many great things that we're going to see from Nintendo in this next generation. And the next one I drew was Fatal Fury City of the Wolves, and this one is a really interesting one because I think even to this day, not enough people know about Fatal Fury. I think when people think about fighting games, they mostly think about Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and probably Super Smash Bros. at this point, but Fatal Fury is one of those cornerstone fighting game series that has had a big influence on fighting games throughout the years, and if the reaction to Terry Bogard's introduction into Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was any key indicator, especially in the US, not enough people know about Fatal Fury. I grew up with Fatal Fury 2 on the Super Nintendo, and Terry Bogard has always been one of my favorite fighting game characters of all time. My favorite thing about him when I was little was when he would win, he would shout, OK! and I've just always loved his demeanor and attitude and look. It's really cool to see SNK give this series a facelift like they did with Samurai Showdown and The King of Fighters. I really love the comic book flair that they give to the art style. The new characters look good. And overall, I don't think it's going to be a system seller, but hopefully it does well. And while I'm here, yes, I'm extremely excited about Terry Bogard's introduction into Street Fighter VI. He's the perfect character for that game. The next game I drew was Age of Mythology Retold. Now, growing up, one of my friends had Age of Empires, and I used to watch him play that all the time on his computer, but I never had the game myself. I played a couple of RTSs growing up, I really liked Goblin Commander back in the day, but it's been a long time since I've played one. I recently purchased Civ 6 since it went on sale, and I know that Civilization 7 is coming out, but this game, this is the one that really grabbed my attention. And so this is the RTS that I'm most excited for. I think the graphics look great, I've always been a fan of mythology in general, and though I know I'm coming into this series extremely late, in a way I think I'm kind of blessed for experiencing this for the first time. And I can't wait to tell you my thoughts on this once it finally drops in September. Now this next one was the one that I thought I would be the most hyped for. The only thing that surpassed it for me was Metroid Prime 4, just because I didn't see that one coming. You see, with the Microsoft leaks, I knew the Doom Dark Ages name a long time ago, but honestly seeing the footage it surpassed all of my expectations. And it's a really interesting next step in the modern Doom series, the best descriptor that I've seen for it being that if Doom 2016 was Evil Dead, then that makes Doom Eternal Evil Dead 2, and the Dark Ages then is for sure Army of Darkness. I would have never expected in a million years to be playing a Doom game that reminds me of Panzer Dragoon, and even though I know the title is called The Dark Ages, I still didn't expect such a heavy medieval influence, it reminds me a lot of the original Quake. And did you guys see his freaking shield? 
This is like a first person Rygar experience. This is crazy. Doom the Dark Ages looks so hype, and I think they're making something that honestly will be a great follow-up to Doom Eternal. And I wasn't really sure how they were going to outdo themselves after that one. Okay, and now it looks like we're getting back-to-back -back Xbox heavy hitters. Gears of War E-Day looks incredible. It was a really oddly emotional experience for me watching this trailer. They really got me with the throwback music by doing that orchestrated version of Mad World that they used in the very first Gears of War commercial that came out years and years and years ago. And I think that doing a prequel is a really great way to get old fans of Gears of War back into the franchise again. To me, it looks like this game is going to take the series back to its roots, and honestly, as an old school Gears of War fan, I'm just really excited to see Dom and Marcus team up again. So I've only got a few more left. The next one I drew was Monster Hunter Wilds. This game looked really special to me. It looks like a true next-gen Monster Hunter game. As someone who only owns Monster Hunter Rise, this was a huge jump in graphical fidelity. I'm someone who's newer to the franchise, and this one looks really compelling to me from a narrative standpoint, which I know isn't really the main driving force behind people's motivations to play. And of course the weapons and combat look great, that's kind of what you expect, but it looks like there's potential for a really strong narrative behind this one that I didn't really see in the other games. I think this one is probably not one I'm going to buy immediately as there are so many games on this list as you can see already. However, it looks absolutely incredible and it's going to be really interesting to see how this one stacks against the other Monster Hunter games. Now there's been a ton of great stuff on this list and I've already proclaimed that Metroid Prime 4 and Doom the Dark Ages were the ones that I was the most hyped about, but now that I've drawn this one, I don't know, maybe Astrobot is my favorite. Astro's Playroom is still one of my absolute favorite experiences on the PlayStation 5 and is one of the few games on the system that took full advantage of its controller. Even after all these years, the moment that I beat Astro's Playroom, it's a really short game, really great but short, I thought to myself, man it would be so cool if they made this like a full fledged adventure game. And honestly, nothing's ever going to take down Mario, but if there is ever a game to come out and make Mario's eye twitch a little bit from jealousy, I think it would be this one. This game looks so gorgeous, so fun, and I'm so glad that it's doing better in pre-orders than pretty much everything else on the PlayStation right now. It deserves it. Also, yes, this is the second time I'm going to make a reference to Legend of Dragoon in this video, but please give me an LOD cameo. Please. And for the final game in this list, it's last but certainly not least, Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven. Romancing Saga is one of those RPG franchises that I've never played but they've always been in like the periphery of franchises that I'm familiar with. And when I first saw the footage of this remake, I was amazed. It reminds me a lot of Dragon Quest XI with the art style, and the whole idea of taking down these legendary heroes that have turned to evil is really intriguing to me. I've heard that the Romancing Saga games have a lot of combat, and I know that the story can take multiple turns depending on the decisions that you make, so hopefully it's got a lot of replayability in that sense. And there are so many RPGs coming out and I don't know necessarily how much of a household name this one is, but I hope it does well because you can clearly see there was a lot of love poured into this game, and maybe it will end up being one of those cult classic like underappreciated RPGs, or maybe it'll kill it, I'm not really sure, but it looks fantastic to me, and also the idea of getting to play the king is really interesting to me as well. So there you have it, that's over 20 games on the horizon that I'm really excited about. This is certainly one of the most stacked lineups of new major release games that I've ever seen. I know that 2023 especially was slammed with some great games, but it looks like late 2024 to 2025 is going to be awesome as well. Let me know which one of these you're most excited about, and if there's a game I missed and should have talked about, please let me know down below. If you're still here, thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay humble.